back on the record, State of Ohio versus Daniel Groves and State of Ohio versus Jessica Groves. The counsel, the parties, and the jury are back in the courtroom. Mr. Tiemann, for Ms. Hutchinson, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The State of Ohio will call Stacy Riffitt. <coughs> Raise your right hand for me, please. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Please have a seat. Now, ma'am, there are media in the courtroom. Do you have any objection to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony? No. All right. Mr. Teeman, you may inquire. Ma'am, would you state your name for the record? Stacy Riffitt. And could you spell your first and last name for the record? S T A C E Y. R-I-F-F-I-T-T. -T. Thank you, ma'am. Where are you from? I'm from Franklin Furnace. And uh, that's here in Sayada County, for those that might not know. Um, how long have you lived in Sayada County? My whole life, 46 years. Have you received any education? Yes. I um, have an associate degree in nursing from Shawnee State and then a bachelor's of nursing from Ohio University. Would that make you a registered nurse? Yes, I'm a registered nurse. Uh, is there any additional training or protocols that you had to go through besides your formal education? Um, well, when I became a nurse at Southern High Medical Center, we had an orientation time that was kind of like on-the-job training um, that gave us uh, better skills in the maternity department. When did you start working for Southern Ohio Medical Center? In 1992. In that time, what positions did you hold at Southern Ohio Medical Center? My whole career has been in maternity, and for 25 years I was a staff nurse, and then um, I became the assistant, um, assistant nurse manager of the nursery um, two years ago this past October. All right, so if I do my math and I'm a lawyer, that would mean 2017 you became? Okay. Yes, the assistant nurse manager, yes. Okay. What does it mean to be uh, a nursery, nursery staff nurse? Um, well, a nursery staff nurse, um, we are there to take care of the babies um, when they're at delivery. We attend deliveries. And um, like a, a maternity nurse, we're all maternity nurses, but an LDRP nurse would take care of the mother. And then at a delivery, the nursery comes in. As soon as the baby is born, then we assume the care. And we would help the mother do skin to skin by placing the baby on her chest, helping her with breastfeeding, um, assessing the baby's needs. If the baby is in distress, then we would take the baby to the nursery area on our floor and provide extra care to the baby. Now, what are your duties as, the, as an assistant manager or the manager of the nursing staff? Um, I am responsible for doing um, like the schedules for the staff, um, making sure that our protocols and policies are up to date, current. Um, I do research to make sure that we're providing the, the best practice of care. Um, and then I help um, develop like order sets that the physicians um, decide on and make sure all that is correct. Now, in, in your role as a, a manager of the nursing staff, do you also um, take turns or take shifts where you're actually staffing the nursery? Yes, a couple days a week, I'm actually a staff nurse, so I would work my eight-hour shift at, alongside the regular staff staffing in the nursery. And I'd like to direct your attention to January 10th of 2019. Do you recall that date? I do. Were you working that day? Yes, I came on at 7 o'clock that morning. And what was your shift, do you recall? Uh, 7 to 3.30 in the afternoon. And just for clarification, <clears throat> were, were you working the uh, nursery that day? Yes, I was working in the nursery. Were you familiar with a uh, baby that was born earlier that morning by the name of Dylan Groves? Yes. Were you also familiar with his parents, Daniel and Jessica? Yes. Yes. Right. At the time, um, I knew the dad. I had not met the mother yet, but okay. the dad was there. 
did you subsequently meet the meet the mother? Yes, later I did. Uh, are they in the courtroom here today? Yes. Could you identify them for the? Could you point to them, please? I'm sitting over there. The reply that the witnesses pointed to and identified the defendants in the approach of Justice Roach. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? May I approach. Let the record reflect on hand the witness was previously marked to State's Exhibit 4, entitled the SOC Medical Records of Dylan Rose. May I go hand these to you if you need to re refer to them? Um, this is a uh, a mic under here, so if you lay it down on there, be very gentle. Uh, okay. If that uh, doesn't pick up too much, so okay. thank you. Maybe if you could, could you open that document and confirm for me that those are the medical records of Dylan Groves? Can I put it in my lap? Sure. Right. Yes, it is. Okay. Did you play a role in this uh, uh, care of uh, baby Dylan uh, and the interaction with his parents? Yes. What was your role? Well, when I came on at seven, the baby was in um, our intermediate care nursery, meaning that um, he was laying on a radiant warmer receiving oxygen. And so I came in and received um, an oncoming report from Tori Howe. What kind of information is uh, uh, in that on oncoming report? Um, well, they tell us what time the baby was born, the date and time of birth, um, if the, there was any risk factors, um, if the mother, how her um, prenatal care was, if she was positive for drugs or not, or any history, um, how the baby's assessment is, um, what if, since this baby was on oxygen, telling me the amount of oxygen, if any medication had been given to the baby or the mother, um, and just the condition of the baby. This report, does it come in the form of uh, verbal communication or written communication or both? It's, it's mostly uh, verbal, but we have the chart. Um, we have the written chart, uh, excuse me, the paper chart, and then the computer charting. Okay. So was this protocol or procedure done with uh, baby Dylan? Were you aware of uh, any substance abuse uh, uh, reported with the mother? Um, at the time, um, I knew that she did, that yes, she was positive for amphetamines. Okay. And how does that affect your um, treatment of a child born in that situation? Well, we have certain orders that the pediatricians have um, collectively come together and decided that we would do uh, further care on, on these newborns. We would um, get a urine drug screen um, initially from the first urine. We would send off a piece of the cord to be tested, and then um, we would involve social service in their care. Now, I'd, I'd like to back up a moment. Was there a diagnosis made with regard to baby Dylan? Do you mean concerning um, the care that we were providing? Uh, concerning the substance abuse issue with the mother. Yes, it's called neonatal abstinence syndrome. And that is um, when a baby has been exposed to um, a drug, a substance, um, mostly the, the opiate um, withdrawal. These babies will start experiencing some withdrawals. So this diagnosis goes and leads us to do uh, assessments every four hours called a Finnegan assessment. What is a Finnegan assessment? Um, we perform it on um, the babies. We look at them for a 30-minute time frame, and there is a set. It's an, a tool that we use, and it is broken down into three different categories. Um, we would look at the central nervous, the neurologic, then we look at um, the it's three different ones and different <coughs> symptoms that we can see um, that the baby is experiencing. Um, this was developed by a um, doctor at, after research, and it's a tool that we have come up to um, give us a score on these babies. Because each of the symptom um, is has a number that we assign to, and then you add all those together. And if the score is at the time, if it was eight or higher, then we would see that the baby was exhibiting signs of withdrawal from an opiate use. Okay, and I want to clarify this. Um, 
withdrawing uh, from opioid abuse, what does that mean? Um, it would be a, um, different symptoms that we would experience. Uh, our, the baby would be showing um, maybe the baby's very irritable, not sleeping well, having tremors, um, whether the baby is being disturbed, meaning that we've unwrapped the baby's blankets or touched the baby, causing them to tremor, or if the baby is wrapped up and just laying um, in the bed, uh, shaking all over. Sneezing, is that also one of the? Yes. Um, then it, it would be, um, there's, a, there's several that they could have. They could have sneezing, they could have um, loose stools, not sleeping well, um, modeling of the skin, several different um, signs of withdrawal. Is it a fair statement that some of these signs are normal? Yes, they are normal things, but the way we explain it to parents is if um, you see one or two of those, any baby could have that. But when you have um, several of them together, then it, the, that makes the score go higher because, say, sneezing is one point and tremors is two points. But together, that makes three. And the higher the score, then the, the more symptoms the baby is exhibiting. Um, one way to describe it would be um, if there's a storm coming and you know it's been predicted that there's a storm. So dark clouds will be coming in, the, maybe the sky, um, the sun is hidden behind the cloud, the wind starts blowing, maybe it gets a different smell. Then you know those are signs that a storm is coming, but if you're just outside and the wind's blowing or the, 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 it gets a little cloudy, you don't know that it's gonna storm, but when you have all of those symptoms together, it shows that the end result is going to be a storm. So that's how this Finnegan goes. Um, if you have, you know, up to the eight points of the symptoms, then that shows the baby is exhibiting these signs. Uh, with regard to the Finnegan, uh, do you recall the uh, scores or assessments that were made uh, with baby Dylan? Um, I would have to refer back if that's okay. Sure. Is it a fair statement that typically when you're looking at those, they're on a computer screen and it might be easier to access a than the... Okay. Yes, this in the paper is um, one symptom or two symptoms per thing, and on the computer, um, we have them all together, so I'm sorry. The first one that he um, had was around 12 o'clock, 11.30, 12 o'clock, the day of birth. And he got a four, looks like. Looks like a four for tremors. Um, undisturbed tremors and disturbed tremors. And again, what is the difference on tremors? Um, that would be if he was laying wrapped up um, in the bed and no one is bothering him and he was tremoring, that would be an undisturbed tremor. And they can be mild or, or, mo or moderate. And mild is when just the upper part of the limbs are shaking or the bottom, and moderate would be all over. And then um, a that's a dis disturbed, an undisturbed undis is when uh, you would go, I'm sorry. I said that backwards. An undisturbed is when you're not bothering the baby and you see the tremors. A disturbed is when you would uncover them or touch them and cause them to tremor. Okay, thank you. Uh, were there other Finnegan stores later as the withdrawals progressed? Yes. Yes, he had tremor, excuse me, he had um, Finnegan scores every four hours until he was ready to be dismissed. Why do they continue to measure Finnegan scores? Well, as the baby um, develops his own um, system, um, then the, they may start exhibiting other signs because um, with the mother being positive also on admission, um, the baby was receiving, um, as the mother took in the substance, the baby was have, being exposed to that because it, the baby swallows it and then um, 
excretes it out, and then all of that amniotic fluid has um, all of the substance in that. And so day after day of being exposed, um, the baby's swallowing it, excreting it, swallowing and excreting it. So when the baby is delivered um, and then it's away from that substance, then it starts to start missing it. And so it starts withdrawing from that. Okay. Uh, there were some terms that were associated with, uh, with babies experiencing this. Could you explain disorganized um, infant, uh, could, what, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> Was it either it might have been disorganized sucking or just this disorganized care uh, or being able to control itself? Okay. Um, babies, every baby cries, but um, a baby should be able to cry for a short time without getting assistance and then gather itself back to where it can calm down. Um, just because a baby cries doesn't mean that it's hungry or it needs a diaper change. Sometimes babies cry because that's just the sound that she, they make. But they should be able to calm themselves down and then just lay there quietly. Um, but Dylan um, was not able to do that. He needed some assistance to try to bring himself back to the center um, so we had to comfort him, wrap him in a blanket, maybe um, put a positioning tool so that he felt safe. So he wasn't able to gather himself back together. And acute if a pain due to substance abuse. Pain? Yes. Um, just as an adult, in all of the evidence that we have done, adults go through uh, discomfort and pain from withdrawing babies due to and they, that's a way that they exhibit the signs where they cry, they um, cannot settle, they, they shake because of the pain of needing the substance that they had in utero. In addition to the, the observations and assessment you did through Finnegan uh, scoring, were there any medical tests performed that confirmed Dylan had been uh, exposed to drugs in utero? Yes, we did a urine test on the baby and his... Um, urine came back positive um, for the amphetamines, and then also we sent the, the umbilical cord off, and it came back for multiple positives. Why do you utilize the umbilical cord to test for substances? Um, the umbilical cord will show um, every substance the mother used from 20 weeks gestation on. And um, a lot of times if a mother is using something that's on a, it's on a everyday use, it may not show because it's a, there's a certain level. But mothers that use different drugs and they maybe just use what they can get a hold of, um, it has peaks and valleys. And um, the cord is, allows us to see everything that she might have taken during her pregnancy from 20 weeks on. Thank you. Other than the diagnosis uh, uh, from being exposed to drugs and the withdrawal symptoms, uh, did Dylan have any other um, complications or concerning health conditions? No. In the beginning, he was on some oxygen, um, which is very common that a baby, um, until they um, stabilize themselves from just the trauma of delivery, um, they may need some oxygen. but. I weaned him off of oxygen within um, an hour and a half after he was born, so um, he was doing really well. I was able to bathe him, and um, he was very healthy. Were there any physical injuries as a result of the birth? No. During the course of your duties in the nursery, did you have an opportunity to interact with the parents of baby Dylan? I did. Uh, tell us about those interactions. Well, um, in the beginning, when I got there, the, the father came in soon after, and he was standing by the side of the bed, and um, I was able to talk with him um, at length. And um, I, after I introduced myself, I asked him um, if he could tell me why they, his wife did not go to the doctor, why she did not receive prenatal care. And he told me because she was taking heroin. And uh, she had found out late, later that she was pregnant, but that she was taking heroin um, enough to keep the uh, withdrawal symptoms from happening to her. 
Did you learn anything about uh, Ms. Grove's uh, training or education? Yes, he told me that she was a nurse. Now, at this uh, point in time, um, what was uh, Mr. Grove's demeanor? Um, he was quiet. Um, he only spoke if, we, if I spoke to him. Um, he kept his eyes kind of low. He had a hat on, but he kept his eyes kind of low and um, wanted to touch the baby. To a, he would, like, reach up to touch him some, but he just kind of wrung his hands. A little bit kind of like this and um, just seemed a little withdrawn. Uh, did uh, he make any statements with regard to any substance abuse by himself? He did not. Now at this point early on uh, this, this period that you're talking to the father when, when did this occur do you recall? Um, I was, it was early in my shift, and the baby was still on oxygen at that time. So it must have been, you know, I came on at 7 o'clock. So that was um, early on, and he was still on oxygen until about 8, 8.30, 8 or 8.30, and then he left. Okay. So if the baby was born at 5.54 a.m., approximately an hour later he came in? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> To your knowledge, did the father ever discuss any drug usage with the hospital staff? Yes, he told me um, later in the afternoon, it probably three o'clock before I left, um, that he had, I asked how the mother was, and he said she was doing okay, and uh, he told me he had just talked with a physician and asked if meth could be found in heroin. Now, you'd had this initial conversation, and apparently he came back later to the nursery. Um, was there any change in his behavior or demeanor in the second time you saw him? Yeah, there was a big difference. Um, his eyes looked uh, a little more glassy. Um, he would not make eye contact with me. His speech was slow. It was not slurred, but it was definitely slower. It's like he had to concentrate before he said anything, and um, he, he definitely just looked down and was quiet. Uh, you've, uh, I believe you testified you've worked approximately 27 years at SMC? I've worked almost, I have worked 28 years in SMC, one year as a nurse tech and 27 as um, a registered nurse. Uh, in that time, have you experienced or observed individuals under the influence of various substances? I have. <clears throat> uh, has that uh, been able to make you uh, identify or uh, recognize symptoms? Yes. And from those, uh, did you have an opinion as to the father's uh, intoxication at that point in time? Your Honor, for police the court for this type of vote. <clears throat> um, yes, I believe that he had used something, that he was under some form of influence. Did you smell any alcohol? Did you smell marijuana? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Are you familiar with the smell of marijuana? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. We have patients that um, are visitors that um, use and they tell us that they are using, so yes. Okay. Could you explain to the jury the discharge process for a, well, let me back up. How long was baby Dylan at the hospital? Um, he was there five days, I believe. Is that a usual amount of time for a baby born under these conditions? 
Um, we usually like to keep them about 72 hours um, because uh, a mom that any baby that we're suspecting um, opiate, which is um, the heroin use, um, then it, for 72 hours these babies could, their symptoms could come out more and they, their Finnegan scores could go higher. So the pediatrician likes to watch them for 72 hours. Um, a baby that's been kept longer probably um, was showing these signs at 72 hours and um, they just wanted to keep and watch just to make sure if they're going to kind of tip the scale, the score is going to go higher and maybe need to be treated. Um, what was the pattern with regard to Dylan's Finnegan scores? Um, I'd have to look and see what the scores were, sure. all of them together. Sorry, there's a lot of paper here. Understood. Okay, um, looks like the scores went from a three all the way up to a 19. What's the high end for um, Finnegan score? Um, it can go any, the lowest score can be a zero, but when we start to think they're having withdrawal um, symptoms, it's an eight, an eight or higher. And at that time, if we get a score of eight or higher, then we have a second um, RN come and do a, an assessment with us so we can verify the score. Okay. Uh, does that explain the, the, the length of your time at the hospital? Yes. As the scores um, got higher at 72 hours, um, it looks like it was having a 14 one time. So they kept a baby um, another day, and then the scores did go back down, but not enough that um, they felt that he was with, without um, the symptoms of withdrawal. You mentioned earlier protocol with regard to uh, a child born uh, under the influence of drugs or withdrawing from drugs. Um, you mentioned contacting, I believe, social services. Um, could you explain what social services is? Yes, we have social service department at our hospital, and um, when we have a child that has been exposed, then we have them come in and they are licensed social workers. Then they go and speak with the mother and try to get the story of her risk factors or why she didn't receive care or why she was using this substance. And then if um, they feel that further care or assistance is needed, then they are the ones that call Children's Services in on the case. Okay. And was, to your knowledge, was Children's Services called in this matter? Yes. We have the social services workers coming in to discuss that part, so I'm going to skip ahead here. Okay. Um, is there a discharge process for an infant uh, at SOMC? Yes. Uh, let me back up one second. Uh, was this infant discharged with his parents? No. All right. Who was he discharged with, do you know? Um, he, he went to foster care, so he was under uh, the authority of Children's Services, but they um, discharging to foster care. Okay, thank you. So uh, what, again, what is the discharge 
process for an infant uh, before that infant can leave the hospital? Um, well, the baby has to be uh, eating well. Um, they don't always gain weight because they may lose some weight in the beginning. Um, able to, um, a normal baby would not have a Finnegan assessment, but on, on a, an NAS or neonatal abstinence syndrome infant, um, the scores have to be less than eight, um, and they have to have been uh, voiding and um, having, you know, diapers and um, making sure that their bilirubin is good and that they're able to, heat was a little early, 36 weeks, so the baby had to have passed the car seat test to be able to go home. Okay, what's the car seat, car seat test entail? A car seat test um, we do on babies that are um, what we call late preterm, and that means less than 37 weeks gestation, and um, they have to be able to be fitted in the car seat with the straps you know, buckled in, and be able to sit for an hour, and their heart rate, respiration, and oxygen saturation level has to, we have um, guidelines that we follow, that they have to be able to pass that for one hour. All right. At this point on discharge, did Dylan meet all the criteria uh, from the hospital? Um, on the day of discharge, is that what you're speaking of, the day yes. of discharge? Um, have to go back and look, but I believe everything once we got the car seat test completed, that yes. Okay. One moment. Thank you, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Mr. Stratton, you may cross examine the witness. Good morning, Mrs. Griffin. A um, couple questions about the Finnegan scores. You mentioned earlier that he had a Finnegan score of what to what? What was his Finnegan scores, his pattern? Um, looks like the scores were three, any range anywhere from a three. Well, I said 19, but I could be mistaken there, sir, because okay. I just saw that was a date and not. So I apologize for that. All right. Um, so let me look at another part of the All right. chart. All right. Because that could be. This, like I said, this chart is so large and it's very hard to read. This I way. understand. A three. I'm sorry. I was just saying that was a three. I'm trying to find oh, okay. the very last one because they just range. Um, seven. Seven. Yes. Okay. So I apologize. So um, with eight being um, the score that we watch for before we treat them, that is why he was kept the extra days in the hospital. Okay, and you want to give medication to, uh, to, uh, to babies who have a Finnegan score above eight, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. um, you're, when, at what point do you give medication? Um, when the scores are eight or higher. If eight. the baby would have three eights in a row, um, then we would give the medication. And no medication was given to baby Dylan? No, sir. Okay. At any time, did you have any, any interaction with Jessica Groves? I did. Okay. What were your observations of her? Well, I really only had one observation with her, and um, when I took the baby out, she never asked to hold him, never asked what condition, <clears throat> since he had come off of his oxygen, because um, it was right after the bath, and um, she only kept him for 15 minutes. <clears throat> okay. Um, no observations after that? I did not. Okay. Were you familiar with some of her complications after 
delivery? Yes. What were those complications? Um, I believe she had a, a postpartum hemorrhage. Okay. Uh, meaning that she had increased bleeding after her delivery. Okay. And because of that complication, what, what had to be done? Um, I know she had to be transferred to another unit for uh, care that's not provided out on our floor. Okay. And would that make it more difficult and to get to the nursery to visit the it baby? Can. Yes. Okay. Can. Do you take the baby off the floor, down the other floors? We do. If the mother requests to see the baby, we have taken, um, we have um, security come with us to escort us down. Okay. Right. No further questions. Yeah. Mr. Good almost afternoon, Ms. Mm -hmm. Um I believe that you indicated in your testimony on direct examination that you did meet the father um, pretty quickly um, after you came on shift. Is that correct? Yes. And you did come on shift around 7 a.m. on the day of Dylan's birth. Is that correct? Yes. And you said that he, Dylan was on oxygen for approximately an hour and a half of the, fir the first hour and a half of his birth, is that after his birth, correct? So that took that up to about 8.30, correct? Yes. Okay. And sorry, just make it a record. I know it's, it's, it's terrible, but we, we got to insist on an out loud answer. Um, and you did meet with the father um, while the baby was still actually on oxygen, correct? Correct. Okay, so he was there at some point in time before 8.30 in the morning, correct? Yes. Okay, and then um, uh, you talked to him a little bit about uh, Mrs. Grove's prenatal, prenatal care, correct? Yes. And did he indicate to you when he actually found out that she was pregnant, how far along he did in not her pregnancy. Say, he did not say how far along, but he just said it, she just found out not too long ago or recently. Okay. So she delivered him in what you all determined to be around 36 weeks, correct? Yes. We determined that by a gestational age assessment. It's okay. a, called a Ballard tool. And he indicated to you that she just recently found out that she was pregnant, correct? Correct. And so he obviously then just found out that she was pregnant fairly recently, correct? Correct. Okay. So he may not, um, based on that conversation with him, had known she was pregnant for very long, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, you also described Mr. Groves as being um, very quiet, um, and he spoke to you when you spoke to him, correct? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And that um, he never admitted to you that he actually consumed any substance of he did Ill not. illicit substances, correct? <coughs> correct? Did the hospital perform a drug screen on Mr. Groves? No. I know he's not listed as a patient, but I did not know if that was something that you performed. That's not a routine thing that we do. Okay. And um, you at some point in time were became aware that Children's Services um, became involved with this family, correct? Correct. Um, were you aware that Children's Services, a representative from Children's Services, performed a drug screen on Mr. Groves the evening of Dylan's birth? I did not know that. Okay. And whether you did or you didn't, I did not know if you knew that or not. Um, so if you did not know that, then you did not know that it was a negative drug screen, correct? Correct. Okay. And... Um, Daniel Groves appeared as if he was trying to be attentive to the baby by trying to touch the baby's hand, I believe that you described. Initially, yes. Okay. And that, um, did he kind of appear like he was scared to touch maybe what appeared to be a fragile baby? I would say that. Okay. Is that atypical with parents who have babies that appear to be medically fragile? Yes, it is. Okay, it is a very typical reaction. Yes, it can okay. be. Mm -hmm. So that behavior of him would not be out of the ordinary? No. Okay, thank you. And 
the, the second time that you met him, do you recall if it was your next shift within that same shift? It was that same day. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you, later in that, that shift. Later in that shift. That's the incident that you're describing him as appearing to have glassy eyes, um, speaking slower and what much more quieter. Do you yes. Okay. Do you recall what time of the day that was? It was probably around three o'clock in the afternoon because I leave at three thirty. Okay. Um, I'd have to go back and look in my the chart to see what I charted, but I know it was near the end of my shift. Okay. So around three p.m. is when this incident happened or this interaction happened that you're describing as behavior that you are suspicious that he have, may have consumed some type of drug? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see him consume any type of drug? No. Did you see if he even left the hospital between that first interaction and that second interaction with him? I just know he left the nursery. Just left the nursery, but you did not see him go anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. I do know, and I, and I appreciate the fact that you have many, many, many years of experience in medical training, but your assumption is just that, correct? It is an assumption. It's an assumption based on just my years of experience. Sure. It is speculation, correct? Yes. You do not have any definitive or direct proof that he consumed anything that he should not have consumed, correct? Correct. Okay. And if he had passed a drug screen later that on that evening around 8 p.m. for children's services, um, would that um, potentially negate the fact in your mind that he was on something? Not necessarily, because it just depends on um, the substance that the person is using. Okay. Some of it has a short acting half-life, means that it's excreted quickly. So within just a few hours? Yes. Okay. Okay. But there's no reason to believe, you, you would have no idea what may have caused him to act like that, other than your assumption. Correct. Um, he could have been um, crying, crying in another room. Could he have been crying and upset? I'm assuming. Okay. Um, could he have just um, be reeling from the fact that he just had a newborn baby that he learned about recently, and the baby was born 30, at 36 weeks and was struggling? Could he be upset about that? I'm assuming he could. Okay. Based on your interactions with Mr. Groves um, and your observation of him, did he seem to have a genuine concern about his infant? Yes, I think he did. Okay, thank you. Kevin, any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ma'am, I talked about, uh, as an analogy, symptoms of a storm in your, in your uh, direct testimony. So let's think about that a minute for your observations with regard to his behavior and that subsequent uh, discussion you had with him. All those observations you had, in and of themselves, what did they lead you to the opinion that he was doing at that point? I believe he had taken a substance that would alter his behavior. Did you think he was crying in another room? No. Did you think he was upset over something that happened on Sports Center or something like that? No. Your, your conclusion was based on 27 years of observations and experience in the medical care and the daily observations that your maternity ward sees. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. 
Now, she, uh, Ms. Uh, Scott asked you about uh, a, a drug test. Uh, you weren't aware of a drug test, I think was basically your answer. Yes. And then you wouldn't be aware of any questionable practices with regard to that drug test, would you? No. You wouldn't be aware of any um, possible people providing urine for the father with that drug test, would you? I would not. Do parents visit with children that are on oxygen in the nursery? Yes. Quite often? Yes, quite often. And this postpartum hemorrhage, uh, do you recollect approximately when that occurred in Ms. Grove's care? I know it did not happen right away because um, she delivered rather early before I got there, and this did not happen until I know after the bath, and the bath was around 10 o'clock in the morning. So I know it happened because um, the baby came back to the nursery before this all, before the hemorrhage occurred. So there was plenty of opportunity for Ms. Groves to go to the nursery. Yes, sir. Or to call the child to where she was at. Yes, uh, mothers can request infants to come out anytime. And when I did take the baby, she didn't ask. I just took the baby out and um, she kept him for 15 minutes. What was her interaction with the baby at that point? She didn't hold him. She didn't ask how his condition was. She just said, put him there on the wall. No further questions. Any recross, Mr. Stratton? No, Your Honor. Any recross, Ms. Scott? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. You were asked um, by Mr. Tiemann to um, follow up with your observations and your belief that my client um, had taken some type of illicit substance and that his um, appearance to you was not based on any other uh, behavior such as crying or being upset, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so, and you were also asked in regards to um, not being aware of a drug test or how the drug test was performed, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so, were you aware if anybody else, um, such as their older child, Daniel Jr., was present at the hospital with the parents? He was there at some time, yes. Do you, was it that day? Um, yes, I did meet him later that day. Okay, do you recall when that was? It wasn't the first meeting. Okay. So I met the father later that afternoon, so it was then. And the teenage child was with him at that time? Yes. At that time. Okay. So let me ask you about this. Um, you gave me an answer and um, followed basically up with Mr. Tiemann that you still believe that my client was under the influence of some type of illicit substance. And we're going to get into who performed the drug screen, when they performed the drug screen, and under what procedure and protocol they performed that drug screen. But let's just take it as of right now in my hypothetical question that he passed his drug screen. It was given properly and it was under appropriate protocol and it was not faked in any way, for lack of better words. Your Honor, we both got into some speculatory things, but I'm going to object at this point. It's beyond normal speculation. Pretty far afield. Just short response. Your Honor, my uh, Mr. Tiemann asked Miss um, Riffitt if she was aware of a drug screen being given, if she was uh, aware of it, what the test would be and what the practice and protocol of it was if it was given under questionable circumstances. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, let me just go ahead and ask you this then. What drugs would have a half-life or whatever word you indicated between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. if this drug screen was given properly? Um, excuse me. I know that if a person had taken some form of amphetamine or a uh, speed, excuse me, is the term, 
um, that has a short half-life, and I know we have tested mothers that have admitted to just taking or smoking marijuana and it not show up positive. I don't have the evidence in front of me, so I can't say that 100%, but I'm just speaking from um, my practice of what we have done in the past on my floor. So some form of speed, which is a form of methamphetamine or some type of amphetamine, correct? Yes. And marijuana. Yes. And you already stated that my client did not smell as if he had been consuming marijuana. Didn't smell it. I, okay. I wasn't super close. Sure. Him, but... However, did he appear to have the same clothing on at the 3 p.m. meeting as he did in the meeting earlier in the day? I didn't pay attention to his clothing, so okay. I can't say. Okay. Your Honor, if I can have just a moment. Scott, does either side have any additional questions for this witness? No, Your Honor. Thank you. No, Your Honor. She can be excused, Your Honor. Thank you. She yes, excused. Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, she excused? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, you're free to go. Thank you very much for your time here today. Uh, just hand that to the bailiff. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, going to be a good time to take our uh, noon recess. Now, yesterday, I, I kept you here pretty long. I didn't give you much of a lunch. I'm going to try to do better to you here the next the rest of the week. Uh, we won't always stop right at noon. We're going to go over today, but I'm going to give you an hour for lunch here today. Remember our earlier admonition to you. Do not discuss this case amongst yourselves. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It is your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it is finally submitted to you. <coughs> Leave your notes on your chairs. The bailiffs will secure those. So make sure they're not disturbed during the recess. I'm going to ask that you uh, be back in the jury room by 10 minutes after 1. That'll give you a full hour. And it'll be my intention to be back here in the courtroom up to uh, as soon as you're ready, no later than 1.15. Court is recessed.